A ring sample of iron has a mean diameter of 5.5 centimeters and a cross-sectional area of 1.2 centimeters square. It's wound with a uniformly distributed winding of 250 turns. The ring is initially demagnetized and then a current of 1.5 ampere is passed through the winding, initially demagnetized. A flux meter connected to a secondary winding on the ring measures a flux change of 8.25 10 to minus 3 Webers. What magnetic field is acting on the material of the ring? So this is asking me the H field, the magnetizing field. Uh, now, because I have a mean diameter of 5.5 centimeters, mean radius uh, we can find uh, to be 5.5 centimeters divided by 2 it's going to be uh, 2.75 centimeters okay and uh, basically I can use uh, Ampere's law here so I'm going to have a, a this is uh, basically a Roland ring and in the Roland ring I can use Ampere's law and with Ampere's law since the magnetic uh, flux will be uh, rotating inside and with this convention it's going to be a clockwise rotation so I'm going to find that the magnetic field H uh, will be uh, in the clockwise direction and if I look at the uh, Amperian loop so this is basically an Amperian loop and I write Ampere's law I have the closed loop integral h dot dl is equal to uh, let's write this in SI units number of turns times the current the total current enclosed so this is basically I enclosed by this loop and this is basically written in SI so I will have uh, since H and DL are parallel to each other this is going to be uh, H uh, integral DL that is equal to n times i h is parallel to dl um, and this is going to be h times 2 pi r bar is equal to n i and i will find the magnetic field acting on the material of the ring to be n i divided by 2 pi r bar so if i substitute 250 turns 1.5 amperes divided by 2 pi times uh, 2.75 centimeters so this should be converted to meters 10 to minus 2 meters in order to work in SI and this will give me a magnetic field H to be 2170 Point three ampere per meter so this is the magnetic field acting on the uh, material of the ring now part B is asking me the magnetization uh, so because my flux meter measures a flux change delta phi that is equal to the magnetic induction uh, times area B times A uh, because the magnetic field magnetic induction and the uh, area vectors are parallel to each other so this is going to be 8.25 times 10 to minus 3 Webers so if you look at this uh, area here the area vector uh, is pointing in this direction and magnetic induction B here is also pointing in this direction so they're going to be parallel um, so this is going to give me for uh, the magnetic induction 
uh, 8.25 10 to minus 3 Weber's divided by uh, the cross-sectional area is 1.2 uh, centimeter square which is 1.2 10 to minus 4 meter square so this is 1.2 10 to minus 4 and this will give me a magnetic induction 68.75 Weber's per meter square or Tesla and since I have uh, the constitutive relation B is equal to mu zero M plus H uh, I can use B over mu zero minus H must be equal to the magnetization of the material uh, initially demagnetized so uh, basically I don't have to consider the remnant magnetization well, with that, uh, we will have uh, 68.75 Weber per meter square or Tesla divided by 4 pi 10 to minus 7 minus our magnetic field uh, 2170 2170.3 ampere per <coughs> ampere per meter so this will give us um, 5.47 10 to 7 ampere per meter so magnetization is about uh, 5.47 10 to 7 ampere per meter and in part C uh, we need to find the relative permeability now permeability mu permeability is the ratio of the induced field to the magnetizing field H so it's going to be uh, 68.75 divided by 2170.3 uh, uh, and uh, because the permeability is equal to mu zero times the relative permeability mu r is relative permeability we will find the per relative permeability to be 68.75 divided by 2170.3 times 4 pi 10 to minus 7 which will be 25208.27 this is our relative permeability so uh, B and H do not have the same units, so it's going to be Tesla uh, meter per ampere. But because it's relative, because it's divided by uh, mu zero here, uh, B divided by mu zero has the same unit as H, so it's going to be dimensionless. So this relative permeability is uh, basically dimensionless. Okay, so let's go through this problem again. We have a Roland ring, basically. It's made of iron, iron ring. It has a mean diameter 5.5 centimeters, so 2.75 centimeter radius. Cross-sectional area 1.2 centimeters square. So I've converted these to SI units. The ring is initially demagnetized and then we pass a current of 1.5 amperes through a winding of 250 turns using Ampere's law, so this is uh, here I'm using Ampere's law um, we obtain closed loop integral h dot dl is equal to ni where ni is the current enclosed uh, this will be equal to 
uh, h times 2 pi r bar because h and uh, dl vector are parallel to each other in this ring so it's going to be the circumference of the ring is equal to ni so ni divided by 2 pi r bar where r bar is calculated in meters gives me h the magnetic field acting on the material of the ring to be 2170.3 ampere per meter the, mag uh, the magnetic induction is the flux uh, divided by the area um, because the flux is given in Weber's. Weber's divided by meter square that gives me the B fields that's 68.75 uh, Weber's per meter square and uh, B is equal to mu zero uh, M plus H so I can use this constitutive relation again this is an SI uh, relationship B divided by mu zero minus H is the magnetization so it gives me uh, 68.75 divided by 4 pi 10 to minus 7 Henry per meter minus the H field 2170.3 5.47 10 to 7 ampere per meter and the permeability is B divided by H uh, so I find this uh, to be mu zero mu r and I find a quite high relative permeability because uh, B divided by mu zero and H have the same units. Uh, the relative permeability is dimension.